Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on In The Blocks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the utility functions of Web3. When you interact with a smart contract very quickly, you will find yourself manipulating some complex data type like hexadecimal strings or you would need to manipulate the different units of Ether. And for that, these utility functions of Web3 are very, very convenient. All right, so let's get started. So I've imported Web3 in my example file and I've instantiated Web3. And on my Web3 instance, I can access all the utility function under the utils namespace. But actually it's also possible to access utils on the Web3 object itself. So here, if you don't want to instantiate Web3, what you could do is web3.utils and it will also work. But in most cases, you probably want to interact with your smart contract. So you probably do like this. So let's see our first utility function, which is called two-way. And this is used to convert any ether unit into way. Way is the elementary unit that is used when you want to specify an ether transfer on the Ethereum blockchain. If you don't know anything about ether unit, check out this video where I explain everything on this topic. But as a quick reminder, one way equals 10 power minus 18 ether. So that means that one ether equals a very large number of way. So typically in your decentralized application, your end user will specify the ether transfer in terms of ether, but not in terms of way. Actually, most of them are unaware of the way unit. So you will need to convert ether into way. So this function can accept two type of argument. The first one is a string. So if you wanted to convert one ether into way, you will specify one like this. So that means for example, that if you have the input of the user into a variable called value, so you can pass this number directly, otherwise two way is going to complain. So in this case, you will do value to string like this. And the other kind of argument that two way accept is instance of big number. So bn.js, that's a library that is used by Web3 to represent big numbers. And next, once you have specified the amount that you want to convert from, then you can optionally give it a unit. So here you can specify that this is in ether. So this means convert this value here in ether into ways. So that means that the resulting number will be something really huge. So it will be 10 and then with 18 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, etc, etc. Actually, by default, this is already ether. So you don't need to specify this. If you write it like this, this is exactly the same thing. But if you have another unit than Ether, for example, if you have a GUI, then you'll specify your different unit like this. If you want to see all the units available to you, you can check out the documentation of Web3. Next, when you want to display an Ether value to your user, you will have the opposite problem because the number you will have will be in way, but end users don't know what is a way, they only deal with whole Ether. So in this case, the opposite operation can be done with from way. So here it receives a way amount as a string or as a big number. So for example here, Usually that will be a very big number and by default it will convert it to ether but you can change this here as the second unit if you pass GUI for example it will convert way to GUI. So if you manipulate ether transfer in your smart contract then in the front end of your decentralized application you'll probably use these two functions. So then I'll show you the function related to big number. So as I said just before this function from way and two way they can accept string but it can also accept big number instance. So you can convert anything into a big number with web3 utils dot to bn. Here you can pass a number, a string or anything you want. So the advantage of this big number compared to this string is that you can do some manipulation. For example, you can add or subtract two big number. 
if you want to access the big number object itself then you can do web3.utils.bn and finally you can test if a variable is a big number or not with web3utils is big number then another interesting thing is to convert hexadecimal value to strings because in solidity you have a type which which is called byte 32 and because byte 32 take less space than string in smart contract oftentimes people use byte 32 for string value inside a smart contract you will accept a string from your user but you will need to convert this to a byte 32 be before you feed it to your smart contract and conversely when you receive a byte 32 from your smart contract you want to display it as a string to your user otherwise the user will see a scary series of hexadecimal number and it will not understand anything so you have two very useful functions for converting between the two types so web3.utils.hex to a sky so here you will give you x string and it's going to convert it to a normal human readable string and if you want to do the other operation to convert a normal string into a hexadecimal string then in this case you will do web3.utils.ascii to x here normal string there are also two other useful function about hexadecimal string so if you want to test if something is hexadecimal you can do is hex and you can also convert anything into a hex string so here to x another function which is useful to work with hexadecimal string is pad left and pad right especially in your test sometimes you will build you will build an hexadecimal string but it will not have the same length as what you have in a smart contract so if you want to do some comparison it will fail so in this case you can use web3.utils.pad left so here you will give your x string and after you will specify how many zero you want to add so 20 for example and you have the same function to pad uh, from the other side so pad right oh i forgot a very useful function for hexadecimal string so sometime in your test you want to generate a byte 32 but you don't really care what's inside you just want it to be a byte 32 so in this case you can do web3 utils random x and you pass the number of bytes that you want to have in your hexadecimal string so for a byte 32 you will want to put 32 here so next let's see the utility function for addresses so first you can test that something is an address with is address next you can transform an address into a checksum address so a checksum address is an address with upper and lowercase character and this allow you to verify that this address is correct so before you send ether you are sure that the address actually exists and so you will not lose the ether so you can do this with web3 utils to check some address and if you have a checksum address and you want to make sure that the address is correct then in this case you can use web3 .util check address checksum and next i'll show you some hashing functions so if you want to calculate the sha3 hash of a value then you do utils.sha3 and here you pass your value and it's going to calculate a hash of that and it's also possible to use another hashing function that is called solidity sha3 and this mimic the behavior of sorry, of hashing function inside solidity smart contract so in this case you can pass several parameter param1 param2 etc so you can pass the values directly or if you want to have more control over how this function is going to interpret each type then what you can do is you can pass object where you specify the type so for example if this is a, a uint uh, 8 for example then you'll specify it like this 
then you specify your value like this, etc., etc., for the other parameter. And sometimes you even see it abbreviated with T and V. So if you, if you see this, don't be surprised. So just to be clear, the type that you specified are all the types that are valid in Solidity. By the way, if you want a quick and easy way to remember all the most important things about Web3 as a blockchain developer, I've prepared a free cheat sheet that you can download by following the link in the description. All right, that's it for this quick introduction to the utility functions of Web3. And this will also conclude this tutorial series about Web3. You can find the whole playlist on this link. And if you want to dive deeper into Web3, you can also check out the official documentation at this address. There are a couple of other features that I haven't covered, like for example, the integration with ENS, the Ethereum name, name service, as well as Whisper or Swarm, some messaging services built on top of Ethereum. But these are really secondary features. The most important is the interaction with a smart contract. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments down below. In the next video, I'll talk about all the gotcha of Solidity, the little thing that I find really tricky when learning Solidity. So make sure to watch this video. Thanks for watching and see you for my next video. Bye-bye.